Welcome back to the You Can Do More YouTube channel, where each week I share videos designed to help athletes, parents, and coaches better understand and navigate the collegiate recruiting process. Videos that will help you get recruited. Last week we talked about the first of nine Purple Cow qualities. Qualities that will help make you a remarkable, recruitable student athlete. And the first of these qualities, being coachable and having character. Today and this week, it's all about the second purple cow quality, speed, and how to get it. One of the first things college recruiters will look for, and one of the first things they will evaluate on film, is how well you run and how explosive you are on the field or court. College coaches are a pretty confident group. They'll always go to figure that they can get you bigger, stronger, and teach you better technique once they've been in their system. The one thing that, that they will want to see that you have coming in is that you can run and that you do run on the field during a game. One of the biggest mistakes many athletes, athletes make is they prepare for their college career. It's a mistake that I saw athletes make often was that they worked on, they worked very hard at getting big but neglect the running part of their training regimen. Do you want to be a remarkable high school football, soccer, or basketball player? Do you want to distinguish yourself from all the other athletes out there? Do you want to be a purple cow? Then run and train for speed, quickness, and explosiveness. College coaches will look for, and they're going to ask about, three things in regards to speed and explosion. The first of these is they're going to ask, what's your 40-yard dash time? Or it might be a 60-yard dash time. What's your vertical leap? And does your speed show up on the field? In other words, do you play fast? We're going to talk about all these things later. So, how do you improve your speed and, and thereby improve your 40-yard dash time? How do you become a remarkably fast athlete, an athlete with purple cow speed? You do it with speed training. If you're not currently doing this as part of your workout program, then you need to be. Make sure you're in your school strength conditioning class, their after school program, off season or zero hour program. If you can't get involved in your school's classes, then ask your coach for a program or do one on your own. Or there are some available online. I'll put a couple of links down below to some pretty good ones. At this site, there's some really good, it's the Central College Strength Conditioning website, there's some really good drills that you can do to help your speed. And I'll put a link to this site down below too. But the bottom line, in order to improve your speed, you have to run fast. Running long, slow distance may improve your overall fitness, might help you lose weight, improve your cardiovascular system, but to learn to run faster, you have to run fast. I need to rewind so I can clarify and emphasize this point. You probably are saying, oh, that's brilliant advice. To learn to run faster, you have to run fast. Here's what that means. As part of a speed development program, you need to train by running at or near your top speed. I'm always amazed when I watch or hear about athletes that are trying to improve their speed by running long, slow distance or by running repeat, repeat sprints with little or no recovery time. Neither of these things are bad, they're just not the best way to improve your speed. As a component of your speed training program, you will need to run comparatively short distances at or near full speed with adequate recovery time in between each rep, so you can continue to hit full speed on your next run. Think quality as opposed to quantity. Speed training programs are all about running shorter distances and running at top or near top speed. Now here's a pro tip. One of the easiest and quickest ways to improve your 40-yard dash time is by improving your start. Most high schools, and colleges too, will have you start your 40-yard dash test in a three-point stance. That means you're going to have your hand on the ground. The watch or the electronic clock will start when your hand comes off the ground. An efficient, explosive start can shave two-tenths to three-tenths of a second off your 40-yard dash time. And that's huge. This video is from the Parisi Speed School. I'll put a link to this video and this site down below as well. But it's one of the best that I've seen on teaching the technique of the 40-yard dash start. Let's take a couple minutes and watch the video. The classic 40-yard dash start is something that we have 
fiddled with for years here at the Parisi Speed School. We've used close stances, wide stances, we've tried everything in the book, and we've used video analysis extensively to find what works best. Before we show you our secret technique on what is the best way to run the 40, we're going to show you some improper techniques that people are using right now and why they don't work. One of the most common techniques that athletes use or that I see athletes use that don't know much about the 40 yard dash is they start entirely too far behind the line which sets their muscles up not to be quick at a start. So Joe right now what he's going to do is he's going to set up the feet a few feet behind the line and the other foot way back with the hand down on the line and the arm up. Right here what's easy to see is if I look at Joe's hips and his back foot he's literally almost a yard or two away from the starting line. So now instead of running a 40 yard dash, he's going to be running a 42 yard dash which is something we don't want. This arm position right here too is what we call the flag. Right there this is a flag saying hey coach as soon as you see that hand move start the watch which is what we don't want to see as well. And if I put a marble on Joe's back which is our signature cue, if I put a marble on his back that marble would roll straight off his back which tells me his back and waist are in too much hip flexion which is going to fire him up straight instead of out when he starts. That's the first one. The second improper stance, which is something I'm seeing coached a lot all over the place too, is something that people call the bunch start. And we've found that this is another start that is going to hurt times and put you in an improper technique for your first step and your first 10. The bunch start, what Joe's going to do is now he crowds the line thinking, hey, now the closer I can get to the line, now the shorter distance I'm going to run. His head is slightly in front of the line, but now he's so bunched up that his legs, the shin angle is improper. He's not going to be able to deliver any force to jump out and again that flexion at the hips is going to jackknife him straight up instead of out where we want to go and again the arm is in the wrong position. So this technique, difficult for people to use, athletes aren't strong enough to really use this technique and it sets you up for the wrong positions when you start. Now what we're going to do is go over the technique that we've found that works best and why it works best. What Joe's going to do now, we found about a four to six inch distance of the front foot that you use behind the starting line. After that we move the feet about five or six inches apart and the toe even with the heel on the back foot. What Joe is going to do then is then using a solid arm, straight arm and solid hand grip, he's going to place his weight onto that front hand still keeping weight on his feet. The shin angle is a good forward shin angle on the back leg and the front leg and that arm is bent and locked at a 90 degree position ready to fire. The low back is arched and the chest is kept open so that if I put the marble on his back now the marble stays in place because in this position now Joe is ready to use his legs, his glutes, his quads powerfully to fire straight out on the angle that his back is at and that his legs are at and we've still got that distance in front of the line and Joe can stand up. This is the technique that we want to use, this is the technique that's helped us produce the fastest guys at the NFL Combine every year. Most of the collegiate players testing at the NFL Combines each year will use the exact same techniques taught in this video. One of the best and most efficient ways to get some good speed training in is to go out for your high school track team if you're not involved in another spring sport. College coaches, contrary to popular belief, like seeing athletes involved in other sports. If you can take part in another sport, like track and field, and improve your playing speed, then that's a bonus. Here are a couple charts to back this up. This information is from a couple of years ago when Ohio State won the FBS National Championship, but the statistics each year pretty much trend the same way. In this first chart, you can see that out of the 47 recruits that Ohio State signed this year, 42 of them were multi-sport athletes. And you can see in this chart, out of those 47 same recruits, 33 of those ran track in high school, and only 14 did not. So why do college football and really all college coaches like recruiting athletes that participate in track and field? 
Well, primarily because the stopwatch or tape measure doesn't lie. A 10-6 meter dash or a 50-foot triple jump are remarkable measures of speed and explosion no matter the size or location or level of competition. In summary, how do you get better at Purple Cow quality number two speed? Number one, make sure you're in some sort of speed training program. Enroll in your high school strength conditioning class. Get involved in off-season, after-school, or zero-hour program. Ask your high school coach for help if you can't get involved in one of those classes. Or if all else fails, see the links down below. There's some good drills and sample programs there. Number two, easiest way, join your high school track and field team if you're not involved in another spring sport. And number three, bottom line, to improve speed, you have to train by running fast. Well, that's it again for this week. As always, thanks for taking the time to visit this channel and thanks for allowing me to join you and your family in this year recruiting journey. In the last couple of weeks, I've had several people reach out for help in the recruiting process by email or direct message. And that's awesome. That's why I'm doing this. So if you have any questions, leave a comment or message me and I will answer. If you can take the time to subscribe, like, share this video and channel, that's always appreciated and I'll have links at the end of this video to easily do that. Have a great week, keep working hard, do everything in your power, in the classroom, in your off-season program, on the field, to make yourself a recruitable, remarkable student athlete. Join me next week as we look at Purple Cow quality number three, Explosion.